Now, antibiotics have been treated for too long as a bottomless pit of cure-all miracle treatments. That is according to a report today from MPs. It says urgent steps are needed to stop doctors and vets from prescribing antibiotics when they're just not needed. It comes amid a fight to prevent the spread of superbugs. Well, we're joined now by the GP, Dr Sarah Jarvis. Very good morning to you. Morning. Now, as a GP, you've probably heard this warning a number of times. Please try and restrict the number of times that you prescribe antibiotics. I have, and I have to say, I think it's a bit insulting actually for an MP to be telling me what to do. We have been giving out this message for years but the problem is we face so much pressure from patients. Now 25 years ago when I became a GP people really didn't understand that most infections were caused by viruses so antibiotics were completely and utterly useless. Now I think people know that but their big concern is I'm really busy, I haven't got time to be ill, I haven't got time to take off sick, it might work just in case, why can't I have them? just in case. And they understand that we need to be careful with antibiotics, but I can be careful with all my other patients and I can give them the antibiotics. Yeah, so what, what is your response then? I mean, you know, as a, when I think about the times I go to the doctor, particularly with my children, mm. and then I'm told we're not going to give you antibiotics, the risk, I feel, like they're being left untreated. Exactly, and that's the big issue because, of course, in the past, people would be given antibiotics and they'd get better a few days later. What they didn't realise was that they'd have got better anyway, so they assumed it was the antibiotics rather than their own body's immune system fighting this off and they were going to recover anyway. And I think that there are occasions when we do have to give antibiotics and that's also an issue, though, because one of the biggest issues we have is people will take the antibiotics for the first two or three days, they're feeling better, they forget, they get better to normal okay, and they don't finish the course and that's absolutely disastrous in terms of building up resistance so what, what i mean the 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 lady from the the pharmaceuticals uh company was in earlier and she was talking about the, the, the importance for pharmaceutical companies is that they put billions of pounds of their profits into trying to generate and, and develop more antibiotics uh, but it's still not enough and they need to be financially incentivized in some way from the government. Do you think that's something that we should see happen? I think possibly because there certainly haven't been very many antibiotics. As far as I'm aware I think there have been about three new antibiotics in the last 30 years yes, and the trouble is that, that bacteria are really clever little so-and-sos. They can mutate, they change incredibly quickly. So if you've given given somebody an antibiotic and most of the germs are dead and a new one develops, a mutation develops, which is resistant to those antibiotics, it's got, it's got no competition because of course all the others are dead so it's got all the food it needs and it spreads like wildfire so it can happen really, really fast. These things, because they multiply so fast, there are so many chances for them to develop new immunity. So you do think we should be developing more antibiotics and, and the pressure should be put onto pharmaceutical companies to find a way to do that? I think we do need to develop new antibiotics but we cannot assume that that's all right then, I can still go and get my antibiotics because it's going to be all right in a couple of years' time. This is not a, a situation which is 100 years from now. It's not a sort of, you know, brave new world situation. It's not a 22nd century science fiction. This is round the corner. All right, so thanks very much indeed, Dr Sarah Jarvis.